Good evening and welcome to Lesson 9-2 on Angle Relationships and Parallel Lines. In tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to identify adjacent and vertical angles, and you will also be able to relate angles formed by parallel lines and transversal. So we're going to go ahead and get started so you know what all of those words mean. So first, we're going to look at adjacent and vertical angles. When they talk about adjacent angles, they mean angles that are really right next to each other. They're almost two small angles, really, that are connected by a side. But their definition is, are angles that share a vertex and a side. A vertex is this point right here. So here would be point X, and here they share, share the side B, um, BX. So again, here's one angle, and here is this one. So, Again, those are adjacent. And then we talk about vertical angles. And these are angles that are formed by two lines that are intersecting. And what ends up happening are those opposite angles have the same measure. So here, we have this line that right here, then we have this line right here. And you can see the point where they intersect. Now, we're going to look at the angle marker, though. If I had to pick an angle that looked very similar to this point here, or what I call two, you would say, well, it's not one or three, four looks the most like it. In fact, it's like the mirror image. If you folded it up, it'd be the same. So these two are considered congruent. Same with one and three. One is pretty similar, if not at all different, than three. So when we talk about vertical angles, they're also congruent. Because angle one is congruent to angle three, and angle two is congruent to angle four. So, we're going to practice. Well, no, first we have to talk about angles. And we have right angles, acute angles, and obtuse angles. All right, and I'm sure you've heard these before in sixth grade, but we're going to bring them back. When we talk about a right angle, it measures exactly 90 degrees, and it looks like that. All right, so this is considered a right angle, and a lot of the times they let you see them with that box in the corner. Now, when we talk about acute angles, those are measures that are less than 90 degrees. So if it was like that, or like that, or anything like that, so anything less than it, it could even be 89 degrees, and it's still considered acute. Now, if this angle, where it's at 90 degrees right now, is bigger than 90, so it goes like this, or like that, or anything like that, it's considered obtuse because it's greater than 90 degrees, because it would go down and over. All right, and then there's another term for you, supplementary and complementary. When we're talking about two angles that are next to each other, um, so they're adjacent to each other, the sum of those measures of two angles can equal 180 degrees if they make up a straight line. So, when we talk about supplementary, those are two angles. So here I have one angle, and here I have another angle. And total, because it makes a straight line, it's going to equal 180 degrees. So, for example, if they told you, well, this is 50 degrees, you could use that and say, well, I know this angle here is 50. The whole thing would be 180. So this missing measure must be 130. That's why we use supplementary. Complementary is when the sum of the measures of the angles equal 90 degrees. So again, these are adjacent angles, but this time we're talking about a right angle or, well, 90 degree angle, I should say. So total, it equals 90 degrees. And again, same idea, I can say this is 35 degrees, and using that, we would say, oh, this is 55, because it has to add up to 90 degrees if they're complementary. So, now they want us to use this. Find the measure of angle three if ang the measure of angle four is 110 degrees. So we want to use what we know, and what I like to do is write it in. So I need to figure out what the measure three here is if this right here is 110 degrees. So I know right here is 110. Well, looking at it, I need to get an adjacent or an um, angle right next to it, so an adjacent angle. And looking at it, well, I need to figure out what this is. So if I know this whole line, again, is supplementary, meaning it's 180 degrees, and this part here is 110, well, that must mean I can subtract those in order to say 
that the measure of that is 70 degrees. Because again, it made a straight line. If it makes a straight line, it means it's at about 180 degrees. Your turn. You're going to do this one. So use the diagram below to find the measure of angle 1 if the measure of angle 4 is 130 degrees. So find out how many degrees it is, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So pause me now. All right, so looking at this, I know angle 4 here is 130 degrees. So looking at it, if I need to know this one right here, that means I must go to this line. And again, it makes a straight line. So I can do 180 degrees minus 130 and get 50 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 is 50 degrees. All right, so now we're going to use all of it really together to find this. If the measure of angle 8 is 20 degrees, find the measure of angle 5, angle 6, and angle 7. So here, we know this is 20 degrees. And we can find the measure of angle 5 and 7, same idea. Okay, this would make a straight line. So you know the measure of angle 5, if it makes a, is 180 degrees minus 20, and you get 160 degrees. Now, you could do this for each part, or we can use that whole idea of vertical angles, meaning if they're across from each other, they're the same. The angle that is crossed from measure 8 here, or the yeah, measure of angle 8, is 6. Because it's across from it, it means it's the exact same. So, the measure of angle 8, if that is 20 degrees, well then, so is 6. And we found out the measure of angle 5 was 160 degrees. So that means because, again, they're vertical from each other, the measure of angle 7 is also equal to 160 degrees. There we go. So you can see how we took all those ideas together. We used the idea of supplementary with finding the angle 5. And then we use the whole idea of vertical angles. If they're fast from each other, they're the same measure. So final part of the lesson tonight is relating angles and parallel lines. And that's when we have transversals. It's when a line intersects two other lines that are usually parallel. So here we have what I'm talking about. We have our two parallel lines and then this diagonal one that's intersecting it. And I named each angle from 1 to 8. All right. There are two different parts of it. We can talk about corresponding angles. And these are angles that lie on the same side of the transversal and in corresponding positions. Again, corresponding just means same measure. Okay, so for example, I have a few here. Angle 1 corresponds to angle 5. Angle 3, right here, corresponds to angle 7. You can see how they have the same, really, um, degrees, it looks like. They're the same. So, and then I leave you one open. Angle 6 corresponds to, well, taking a look, it's not 4, it's not 8. But it looks pretty similar to angle 2. So those are what it means when it says correspond. They are on the same side. So the red ones are on the same side. Green are on the same side of that um, intersecting line. And same with the blue. Then we have alternate, alternate interior angles. Now when we talk about those, it's, you can really look at the word itself to help you solve that one. All right? Alternate means opposite. Interior means the inside. So we're going to look on the inside with these numbers. That's what it means with alternate interior angles. The interior of a pair of lines on opposite sides of the transversal. So here, angle 3 corresponds with angle 6. And then angle 4 would correspond opposite side, angle 5. So we're going to track. So in this diagram, uh, line P is parallel to line Q. Identify each of the following. Congruent corresponding angles. So again, they want you to name the corresponding angles. So to start us off, again, corresponding means they're the same size and they're on the same side. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Let's see. You could do, and they don't tell us to only name a few, so I think we have to name them all. Angle 2 and angle 4. Okay, I want you to do the opposite side now of that one. So, on the opposite side of that intersecting line, what would you have? 
I'm going to give you a few seconds. I don't know if I want to play some music. Well, da, 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 da. You keep working on it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then we have angle five and angle seven. And finally, angle six and angle eight. So those are what you should have on the opposite side with my poorly written and hummed music. And then we have congruent alternate interior angles. Well, again, that leaves us only four because they're the inside. Those are our interior. And here, well, opposite on, they're on opposite sides. So angle two is the same with angle seven. And then angle three is congruent, or would be with angle six. All right, there we go. That is your lesson tonight. Tonight we looked at different angles when we talked about obtuse, acute, and right angles. And we talked about how you can find the complementary and supplementary and so on. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.